Okay, so, in the last couple of classes we have seen how planning can be modeled as a CSP, you can convert a planning problem into a constraint satisfaction problem. The whole idea of doing this sort of a thing is that once you transform this problem into a well known class of problems, then you can use off the shelf solvers for actually solving it. So, your task is only to convert it into a CSP. We can also do the same for SAT, we can convert it into a SAT problem and that is in fact, what was done by Kotz and Selman and they wrote an uh, planner called SAT plan as the name suggests, it converts the planning problem into a SAT problem. It is a hugely successful uh, implementation in the planning competition. So, this was done in 92 or so, I think in 98 or something or they won the international planning competition, which is a competition in which you have to write your domain independent planner and then they will give you domains and problems and then your planner should run on that and then they compare uh, which one finds better plans, which one solves bigger problems and things like that. Because planning is a hard problem and typically after as the plan, as the problem size grows and which means the number of blocks in for example, in blocks worlds grow, it becomes harder and harder to solve this. Now, encoding planning as a SAT problem is similar to encoding it to a CSP and we will look at a couple of ways to do that essentially. So, instead of constraints, the problem is expressed as a formula in propositional logic which is satisfiability. So, essentially all the variables have uh, values which are true or false and all the constraints are logical connectives and look for a satisfying assignment to the propositional variables. So, the variables for example, on a b are called fluents, which is also a standard term in AI nowadays and by fluents we mean predicates that can change their value over time and typically we use symbols like f 1, f 2 and f and so on. The basic idea in the so called linear encoding that we want when to find linear plans into satisfiability is to add a time parameter to the fluence and express the relation between actions, preconditions and effects essentially. Something similar to what we did in CSP, we had a state 0, state 1 and so on. Here we are talking about it as time and then we are still trying to capture the relationship between actions and their preconditions, actions and their effects and also the frame axioms. Only thing is the, the formulation is different, the formulation is going to be a SAT problem. Essentially. So, you have to sort of put together this SAT problem piece by piece and let us look at all the different influences on this thing. So, in the initial state S0, if a fluent is true in that state or if it belongs to the state S0, uh, then we add f as a clause. So, we assume it is in some CNF like form or we can convert it to a CNF like form. If it is not true, then we add negation of F0 as a clause essentially. So, for example, in the problem that we were looking at, if A is on B and so if it is a very simple world in which A is on B, then clear A is true and not clear B is true. So, maybe we should have also stated where is B, but that is something which is missing here. So, maybe I can add that here. Is that on table? B T 0 or something like that. Then the influence is from the goal clause, but assuming that at most k steps and this is the same theme, it happens in graph plan, it happens in CSP, it, it happens in planning a satisfiability is that you try to pose it as a problem of a given length, that the plan is of a given length and then you try to solve it essentially. And we can sort of iteratively increase the length, so some kind of iterative deepening algorithm can work here. So, if you assume that the plan is of at most k steps, then we add a fluent f k for every goal proposition that has been specified uh, in the problem. Then like in planning with CSPs, an action implies its preconditions. So, if an action holds at time t, then its preconditions must hold at time t minus 1 essentially. So, you can see that earlier we talked of it as a constraint that an action for example, unstack a b in this in the state variable description said that it must be it is related to the fact that a is on b in the previous state. So, we had a binary constraint there essentially. So, here we are stating it as a as a formula in logic and we are saying that if unstack a b is true at time t, then the following three things should have been true at time t minus 1, which is that the preconditions of this action, which is that A must be a, must have been on B, 
the arm must have been empty and A must have been clear, there was nothing on top of A essentially. So, the difference is now we are writing this as a formula in proportional logic and action implies it affects which is similar. So, for the unstack action we have that if you unstack A from B, then not A B will be true at time t, the action is done at time t, the preconditions hold at time t minus 1 and the effects hold at the time t, then arm is no longer empty at time t, you are holding A t and B has become clear. So, all the effects uh, you add this thing and then you add the classical frame axioms that if the action A does not affect a fluent f, then f remains unchanged after the action. So, this is the generic form of stating that constraint that a fluent at time t and an action A time t minus 1 and action A implies the fluent is true at time t also. So, a fluent which was true remains true, a fluent if it was not true, not true meaning the fluent was not, not of something, then it will remain not of something. So, for example, if C was clear at time t minus 1 and you are unstacking A from B, then C must be clear at time t essentially. You have to state this for every action and for every fluent essentially. So, of course, you the good thing is that you do not have to do it manually, you can write a program to do this, but essentially all these connections must be established for every action for every fluent. The original formulation of SAT plan, which is a algorithm, which is a program written by Accords and Selman uh, also had clauses that said that only one action occurs at a time because you were looking for linear actions at the time, and that can be expressed as expressed as a constraint of the kind that one of them must be false at least. I mean, both can be false, but one of them at least must be false. It's not that one of them has to happen. So for every pair of actions, we have this constraint. Okay, we can also, like we did in the case of CSP, we can take a planning graph and then convert that into a SAT problem essentially. So if you remember, this is what a planning graph looks like and a planning graph is constructed in a forward fashion and here we have constructed two stages of the planning graph and so we have for example here the no op operation which says that on t b was true and on t b is true in the it was true in the initial state and it is true in the first layer and then it gets carried forward essentially because you know you are taking a union of all possible actions essentially. So, that is one property of the planning graph that it grows monotonically. Once a variable enters a layer, it stays there. So, there are of course, of course, things like mutex relations that we had talked about. We had said that two actions are mutex or two variables are mutex essentially. Hmm. What, what we are seeing here in a dot is a, is a negative effect or as in the slips domain we sometimes call it as a delete effect essentially. So, all everything that can be possible is captured in the planning graph. So, in that sense a planning graph is already like a specification of a constraint satisfaction problem is that, that, that if that if for example, uh, uh, if, if for example, hold C has to be true in the proposition layer 1, then it must have been picked up in the first action layer essentially. And if you want to pick up C in the first action layer, then clear C must have been true to start with, on table C must have been true and R must have been empty essentially. So, these are the three conditions. So, essentially you are stating the conditions, the, the conditions between pick up and its pre preconditions, pick up and its post conditions. And now we are simply saying that the planning graph is already constructed this and let us just convert it into a SAT problem essentially. So, assuming that this planning graph is available to us and typically what you would, would do is that you would grow a planning graph up to a certain length and that length is at least that till all the goal propositions are appear in a mutex free fashion. So, for example, if the goal here is to, uh, is to do let us say C on A and on B. Oh, that is very easy. Uh, I hope it does not go off C on B on A. Then you want on 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 C on C B I do not have here and on B I do not have here because I have not drawn the full proposition layer. So, on C B should be here, on B A must be here and somewhere on table A, okay, I do not, 
even have that on table A must be true and all of them must be non mutex, there must be no mutex relation between them essentially. You grow the planning graph at least till that level, then you convert it into a sad problem which we will see in a moment, then try to solve it. If you cannot solve it, then extend it by one more layer and then try to solve it and there is a termination criteria which we will not go into, which will happen if the, if the problem does not have a solution essentially. So, how do we encode this into a sad problem? So, from the initial layer, this is like the straightforward application that only difference is that we are saying that in the proposition layer 0, which is the initial layer, then you add F0 as a clause, else you add negation of F0 as a clause, which is what we did earlier also. Likewise, for the goal state, uh, we add a fluent fk for every goal proposition that is in the goal state essentially. And action implies this precondition, which is also the same as what we did a short while ago, when we just directly formulate it as a sad problem. If an action holds at true, so remember this is a sad problem, you are saying that action happening at time t is a true statement or not, at, at some time t, then its preconditions must hold at time t minus 1 and this is expressed as a clause of this kind that action implies its preconditions at time t minus 1 and where this is a conjunction of all its preconditions. So, again the same example that we saw earlier essentially. If you are unstacking A from B, then A must have been on B at time t minus 1, the arm must have been empty and A must have been clear essentially. The effects are handled a little bit differently here. So, what we say here is that for every fact in a proposition layer in some level t, a disjunction of the actions that could have created that fact is, is implied. So, essentially you are saying that if this fact has come in the proposition layer and remember that the proposition layer is constructed in a forward fashion is that whichever actions are applicable, you add their effects to the next proposition layer and you keep doing this essentially. And because now we are working with a subset of all possible actions, we are only considering those actions which have appeared in the action layers. What we are saying is that if a proposition has appeared at level t, then one of the act, some action in the previous layer must have achieved it. So, for example, if you are holding A at level t, then you must have either picked up A or you must have unstacked A from B for example or unstacked A from C or you would have done a no op, which is the case that in the previous layer itself you were holding A essentially. So, depending on what, what is true essentially in the previous layer, which are, these are the actions which may exist in the planning graph here essentially. So, this implies that that uh, that in the previous layer uh, A was on the table and then pick up A action was applied. In the previous layer also A was on B, remember that we can have multiple things happening. There would be mutex relations between on table A and on A B, both can be not true at the same time. So, mutexes play a big role again, but one of the actions or all the actions in the previous layer which could have achieved it, at least one of them is implied essentially. And then the mutex will take care of the fact that exactly one of them is implied, that, that everything cannot happen. That is what happens in the backward phase of the of the planning graph. It of all the actions that could have achieved holding A, in the final plan only one of them will exist. And then you have to choose the one which is consistent with the rest of the uh, planning graph and that is where this idea of, of constraints comes into play essentially. So, this is determined by the planning graph, this is not a generic statement. Then actions that are mutex can directly define clauses in the SAT and likewise for propositions, you simply say that, that one of them must be false essentially. That you can either pick up C or you can unstack A from B, you cannot make both true at the same time, at least one of them must be false. And that and these are the binary mutexes that we were talking about essentially here. Okay, so, I think with this uh, we have seen two ways of converting a, a planning problem into a SAT problem and I do not think I have more details on this. So, we will leave it here and with this we will also end with this planning application to this 
uh, constraint satisfaction course. Uh, we are seeing planning as an application of constraint satisfaction. Of course, planning needs a full course in itself and maybe at some point we will have a course on planning as well. Okay, so, we will stop here. Uh, in the next class, I will just wind up uh, uh, what we have studied in constraint satisfaction and I will try to also highlight things that we have not done uh, and which we will not be doing in this course, but which which would be part of constraint satisfaction. So, there are certain things that we have not looked at. I will just try to point out list those things and then we will end there essentially.